What's up guys? So I got a quick one that I want to get on film. I've been working on this uh, 2011 Nissan Altima for uh, two codes, a P0111 and a P0113. I got, uh, I got an interesting tool I'm going to use and it's gotten pretty interesting so check it out. Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, so the tool I got is the ECT2000. I've actually uh, had a few people ask me about this tool, <coughs> Kyle, but uh, just wanted to, uh, I'm getting ready to use it, and I wanted to kind of break it down the process, but I want to get you guys caught up in this, uh, you know, I guess you could call it a case study. I'm getting ready to probably, hopefully, figure this thing out, but I'll tell you guys what we did already and kind of where we're going to go from here, also how to use this tool. All right, so I had to turn down the radio because I don't want to get demonetized. But this is pretty much where we're at. The codes that we got are for the uh, high voltage to the mass airflow sensor. And, you know, obviously I checked the sensor. Um, sensor's good. You know, I ohmed it. Everything's good on it. And it's not the mass airflow sensor side of it. It's the temperature sensor that's built in on these. So the customer actually got a... Uh, mass airflow sensor off Amazon for 30 bucks. I mean, you know, I tell my customers, you get what you pay for. You pay, you buy a $30 mass airflow sensor, that's what you get. You know, you might get 30 good minutes of a good sensor out of it then. But or other cases, you, you end up lucking out. But in this case, he didn't. So I got a uh, Hitachi mass airflow sensor for it. It's omen good now. But testing the, uh, the pinouts on this pigtail, I'm getting no signal on the uh, temp sensor. I believe it's the red one here. I got a good ground. I got known good ground. They share a ground, the master flow sensor and the temp sensor. They share a good ground. All the other wires are good, but I got no signal with the key on. And the range, from what Mitchell says, should be zero and four volts or something like that. Let's see if we could get it. Let's see if we get it. The range is, uh, here, I'll put voltage varies with obviously the temperature of it. So I would guess, you know, the colder it is, the lower the voltage is going to be, the hotter it is, the higher the voltage is going to be. But I got, I got no voltage at all coming out of the red wire. So what I'm, I think I got a break in it. And I, I kind of poked around at the ECU. I found the pin out on that. It's pin 50 on the brown, I think EC or E2 terminal or C2 terminal or C2 plug. So I checked that and I got voltage coming out of the ECU. So I know the voltage is good with the key on coming out of the ECU, but it's not getting to the pigtail. These ones, I kind of started opening it up, but these are the ones where they kind of, Nissan wraps them and zip ties them and they kind of, you know, they do that to it. So I'm guessing, you know, we're going to have a break somewhere, somewhere where they bend it. I think there was a bend here. There was a bend here that I pulled the zip tie off. I don't know, the zip ties are probably on the ground somewhere. Uh, I just stepped on one. Here's one. I cut them off to straighten out. But I'm gonna get this. Uh, I'm gonna get this Power Probe ECT2000 on the case and see if we could uh, find a break in the wiring. And we can only go so far. But I think it comes out at the top and then loops back around into this wiring harness here. So we could always maybe see if there's a break here, come back through here. But I'm gonna get you guys set up. I'll show you how I set up this tool and uh, kind of what I use it for when we're looking for a, uh, you know, a short circuit or a break in the line. All right, guys. So here's the kit, the tool kit, and it pretty much comes with, you know, your transponder. The wire hooks up to the battery. You got your uh, voltage wire. This sends, you know, whatever whatever lead or whatever circuit you're testing. This will send voltage to the wire, and this is your transponder. It picks up the voltage this transmitter puts out. So setting this thing up, pretty much take. Get a good place to put this here. You pretty much take this end of it and you hook your leads up to the battery. It'll give you a beep. And then what we're going to do is this is our 
voltage side here, the green wire, we're going to get a little probe or those pins, these terminals are pretty small. Um, the back probe, or no, I could use this. I was using this with the ground, so I'll just use my little uh, battle nails here so I don't damage the wire and I don't definitely don't want to damage the pigtail. Make sure we get a connection there. And then we'll take this side and basically plug it in. Get this all in one here. Basically plug it in there. Now what that's doing, how this tool works is it pretty much puts you know, a volt or two or three, probably three volts, nothing higher than five, but probably three, three and a half volts through that circuit. So, and basically what the, what this receiver is going to look for is the voltage that the, you know, the transponder is putting out or the transmitter is putting out. So this is putting out three volts. This thing's looking for three volts only on that circuit. So it'll work with the key on and all that good stuff. And basically there's a couple settings on this you got your lights um, it you can get a rapid beep it'll beep real flash you can lock in lock in the sensitivity range but you can see you know as soon as I start to get this close to it it starts picking it up and then if there's a break in it you can see you know if there was a break in that line so you'd be picking it up and if you pass the break it's gonna stop beeping so you got fast and then there's a break there it stops beeping and then it also tells you the directions. The lights will tell you the directions of you know where your brake is or which way the short's going to be or whatever it is. But in this case, it's going to be probably it's not a short; it's a brake because I'm getting nothing at all, no action at all out of this wire. So let me get this thing plugged back in here. Make sure we're getting a connection too. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so basically, I'm just going to try to follow this loom. Like I said, I'm I'm guessing where they bent it. You know, before I go cutting open this loom, I'm guessing where they had it all bent up is probably where it's a weak point and it probably broke in or bad connection there. So just start off here. All right, we're still going. Starting to slow down. We're getting further away. Hold on, you gotta make sure you're on the wire. I mean, this stuff will go through, it'll go through wiring looms and all that. Oh no, wow, is that easy? Hold on. <laughs> so, you gotta be kidding me. All right guys, so it looks like where it tees in here, it stops. Wow, let me get you guys zoomed in. I'll show you this. So you can see Here's the loom here, and you can see where it's beeping it. Obviously, the closer you are, the faster it's going to beep, but we start to follow it down here, still beeping, still beeping. As soon as we get to where this branch is off, it stops. Oh. Maybe not. Yeah. So yeah, guys, I can't believe how easy this is. Just to show you, I got the harness here. We got you zoomed in. You can see the harness. The closer you are to the beginning of the circuit, you know, the output of the circuit, the three volts is going to beep fast. It starts to slow down when you follow the harness down. And you can see right when we get to, right there, right when we get to the T where it tees out, it just totally dies out. So obviously the brake somewhere where it tees off here and then I back up and you can see it starts up again and you could actually set it where you get a solid beep and when it breaks it's gonna stop right there so somewhere where the antenna is there and that's exactly where it tees in somewhere there so that's how this tool works I'm gonna open up this loom real quick and see if we could find a brake alright guys so yet again I cut the wire loom back a little bit, kind of where it starts to tee in. And you could see these were all bunched together here, packed up in there, folded on itself. I got to check this blue one and all the other ones now, make sure they're not weak. 
but this red one was our signal wire and sure enough I just I started to pull it and it broke it snapped right off so there was a weak point inside there and that's where our broken circuit was so I gotta check uh, I gotta check the blue one and all those other ones straighten these out make sure we got no uh, weak connections on this one end up with a ground problem or what a mass airflow sensor problem so but yeah that's how that tool works so you can see let's see turn this thing on let's uh let's put the three volts back in there so now we know where our brake is you can see let's get this plug back in here got the receiver so we're beeping here start to slow down slow down and right where the brake is it stops you can see so fast there's a brake get down to the next one and it stops so that was our brake there guys that's how the tool works though. Great little tool for finding short to grounds or open circuits. You're breaking the lines and all that stuff. This thing comes in handy. I've actually found broken ABS wires with this thing, airbag, all types of stuff with this. You can use this thing for a lot. And pretty much what it does, it sends three volts, I think it was. I checked it with the power probe. You could see it pretty much sends uh, you know, just a couple volts through it three I don't know if you guys are seeing that you can pick it up on the multi-tool here 3.06 volts so about three volts through the circuit and that's what this thing tries to pick up it looks for the three volts that this one puts out the transmitter puts out but definitely a great tool go ahead and repair this wire for them got a Matachi uh, mass airflow sensor put this thing back together call it a day just a quick one on that. I knew this one would be an interesting one. I actually thought it, the brake was going to be maybe closer to the the, uh, the ECM or the ECU, but you know it's probably the way Nissan folds up these wires. You know when they put them in there, and uh, you know that that causes stress on them. The engine being heat soaked and all that stuff causes stress on the wires, and you know just they they they're brittle. I mean they're super tiny. What are they like? 18 grade gauge wire, 20 gauge wire, they're super small, you know, there's like four strands in there, they're not going to be able to hold much uh, stress, so, but just a quick one, like, comment, subscribe, catch you guys in the next one, signing out.